नमस्कार मैं हूँ जया सिमको कम्युनिटी मीडिया में आपका स्वागत है हम महिलाएं पिछले कुछ दशकों में बहुत आगे बढ़ चुकी है हालांकि हमारा जीवन अभी भी उन चुनौतियों से भरा हुआ है जो एक बड़े पैमाने पर पुरुष प्रधान समाज में मौजूद है इन सामाजिक बाधाओं के अलावा एक महिला होने का मतलब है विभिन्न भूमिकाएँ निभाना एक माँ पत्नी बेटी बहन और पेशेवर के रूप में इन विशाल चुनौतियों के बावजूद सफल महिला होने का क्या मतलब है इनस्फील इंडियन एसोसिएशन ने इस प्रश्न का पता लगाने के लिए छह सफल महिलाओं को एकत्रित किया जिनमें एक राजनेता पुलिस अधिकारी डॉक्टर एक व्यवसायी और एक कनेडियन आर्म फोर्स की वेटरन शामिल है पैनल का संचालन इनस्फील इंडियन एसोसिएशन की उपाध्यक्ष सुदेशना शाह ने किया इनस्फील की मेयर लिन डॉलिन ने कोरोना को अपना सुपर पावर बताया उन्होंने दूसरों को प्रभावी ढंग से समझने और सहायता करने की आवश्यकता पर जोर दिया बैरी इनस्फील की विधायक एंड्रिया किंजन ने समुदाय को अपना अंतिम सुपर पावर के रूप में पहचाना उन्होंने अपने व्यक्तिगत और पेशेवर जीवन में समुदाय के महत्व को उजागर किया और बताया कि यह उन्हें प्रतिदिन कैसे प्रेरित करता है साउथ सिमको पुलिस सर्विस की उप मुख्याधिकारी शेरल सटन ने कहा कि दूसरों की मदद करना उनकी सुपर पावर है उन्होंने अपनी सफलता में सामुदाय के योगदान को अधोरेखित किया 400 हंड्रेड क्राइसलर डॉज जीप रैम की मैनेजिंग पार्टनर क्रिस्टी फाइस ने संघर्षशीलता को अपना सुपर पावर बताया उन्होंने इसे व्यापार समुदाय और व्यक्तिगत चुनौतियों में दृढ़ता और सहनशीलता की आवश्यकता से जोड़ा एम्पावर सिम्को की सीईओ डॉक्टर क्लॉडिन कजिन्स ने आत्म स्वीकृति के महत्व पर जोर दिया सेवा निवृत्त कर्नल निशिका जार्डन ने करुणा और सहानुभूति को उनकी सुपर पावर बताया उन्होंने ये गुण विशेष रूप से उनकी कनेडियन आर्म फोर्स के करियर में प्रभावी नेतृत्व और सेवा के लिए आवश्यक बताया अब आगे देखिए चर्चा सत्र का वीडियो वेलकम एवरीवन। इट्स ट्रूली एन ऑनर टूडे टू बी एबल टू मॉडरेट फॉर दिस एम्पावरिंग डिस्कशन and i have these amazingly beautiful and gorgeous ladies here with me who need no introduction but to set the context moving from my left is mpp andrea kanjin bari mpp bari in his fifth we have colonel nishika jardin veteran ombud mayor lynn dolin mayor town of innisfil deputy chief of south simco police sheryl satin dr claudine cousins ceo empar simco and finally we have christy fines managing partner of 400 chrysler and barry chrysler so moving on to the theme of our discussion today is redefining success empowering women to be unstoppable in their own definitions in a world that is constantly evolving the term shero has emerged as a powerful and inclusive way to recognize and celebrate the extraordinary women who shape our communities and break barriers every day but did you know that the term shero was coined long back in 1932 but we are using it more commonly right now Now, the concept of shero is not about traditional heroism. It is also embodies the everyday lives of these women, embodying resilience, courage, and steadfast determination to create a lasting influence on each other. So, moving on with this conversation, I would like to start with Mayor Lynn Dolin. As a shero, what do you believe? is your ultimate superpower summed up in a single line thank you for the question i i would say um compassion you you can't fake compassion if if you don't have it um and i think it helps particularly in the job that i do um that you have to be able to show compassion to people and to in order to really understand how they feel and also to be able to help them that's a wonderful superpower having compassion <laughs> moving on to deputy chief satin i would like to ask you the same question what is your ultimate superpower uh thank you very much for the question um i'm going to say that my uh superpower is uh, supporting others uh, i think as a community if we're not supporting each other 
um, then what are we here for? Um, the community is just the sum of all of its parts, and in order for us to succeed, then we need to support each and every one of us. Very well said. Dr. Cousins, we would like to know your superpower as well. Sure, my superpower is a little different. So my superpower is being comfortable in my own skin. Because, you know, if you're comfortable in your own skin, you can leverage all of the other superpowers. My draw. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> that is amazing. Christy, we would love to know your superpower. So I, I think the one that comes to mind right now that's probably most, you know, top of mind for me would be resiliency. And I think about that as a community and everything we go through together that we have to be resilient. I think of that in terms of business, you know, business goes up and down, we need to be resilient. And I think in terms of people, with all the obstacles that are thrown at us, we need to be resilient. MP Pekanshin, what are your superpowers? Well, it was a tough question because I was like battling between two different words, um, but ultimately I landed on community um, simply because I wouldn't be here without community and I can't do the duties that I do every day without community. And I think that having that groundedness and that sense of community every day, uh, that sense of belonging that is the community I represent, really helps me uh, continue to do my job every day and is a great motivator. Amazing. When I was a young officer, the thing that I learned was that the most important resource we had in the Canadian Armed Forces, which is where I had my career, is people. And you can't work with people if you don't have compassion and empathy for them. And so that has been the hallmark of my service, I believe, is my compassion and empathy for people. So I call that my superpower. Amazing. We have a great list of uh, superpowers here, but here I would like to take a pause for this panel discussion and I'll shift the focus for a moment into the sheroes who are in the audience. And I would like to ask if anyone wants to share any of your superpowers. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my superpower is love. Uh, love for God, love for my family. I couldn't do anything without them and um, also courage, the courage to walk a path that others don't. And sometimes as women, it's very hard to take a step without those superpowers of love uh, behind you. Amazing. Thank you, Krista. So Krista has won a $25 coupon card from Blue Distro. Congratulations. Okay, moving on to our discussion here. I would like to continue and ask MPP Kanjin. Your accolades are so impressive. As the newly appointed Minister of the Environment, Conservation and Parks, along with your role as the Member of Provincial Parliament for Barry Innisfil, you have achieved significant milestones. Notably, you hold the distinction of being the first female progressive conservative Jewish cabinet minister in the history of Ontario. longest serving deputy government house leader for the progressive conservative party of Ontario since 2019 speaks volumes. Additionally, you have contributed as the parliamentary assistant to the Minister of Intergovernmental Affairs and Deputy Government Whip. I would like to ask you, among all these roles, which one would you consider to be the epitome of success for you? Being a mom. <laughs> I think it's taught me the most. I mean, no degree um, or um, work experience could teach you the skills that I've learned through being a mom. I think it's uh, prepared me to be a better community representative uh, and to help me fight for uh, for more policies. So definitely a mom. <laughs> that was amazing. Okay, Dr. Cousins, I would like to ask you your dedication to serving as a catalyst for positive change within the community is commendable. By actively supporting women's empowerment and advocating for local equity, diversity, and inclusion, 
you exemplify a profound commitment to societal advancement. How do you envision this alignment with your personal definition of success? That's a great question. I've always been someone who recognized that just because something is hard, and just because I may seem to be the only one who's pushing or trying, doesn't mean that I shouldn't do it. So uh, I've, I've always been fighting for those who, as we heard back here, those who are marginalized, whose voices aren't heard, who is left behind. Um, that has always been part of who I am. You know, my parents tell me stories about the things that I've done that make me cringe. And I'm saying, how did you let me get away with that? And I realized it was the start of me being an advocate, even when I was small in a big family of 11, and bossing my brothers and sisters around because I was going to be the one to tell them what needs to be done. So, you know, I continue to do this because I believe that the society that we're in can only be better if we're all given an opportunity to be our very best selves. And by advocating for women, especially, and young girls, we know that they will build up a community. They will be the ones pulling up the rest of the community along with, you know, all of our men. We love you. We do. We absolutely do. But the women will definitely be pulling up the community. So for me, it makes, makes it so much more important for me to be out there lending my voice wherever I can to this very important um, part of our society and our community any way I can. So that's how I, you know, I see myself that. I, I see it, I do it, and um, I feel that if I don't do this, that I'm, I'm letting myself down. Christy, you have dedicated considerable time in charity work. Have your extensive philanthropic efforts in any way shaped your present interpretation of success? Um, so it's interesting. So I've won a lot of automotive awards for retail operations and all of that, but those awards don't mean as much to me as the ones um, that are related to community work because we are all of you know all of my staff are all we all live in this community right and to me it's super important that we give back to the community that's good to us um, so for me nothing means more to me you know than when someone comes into one of my dealerships and says hey I met you at this event or I saw you here or you know this morning I met with um, a client who said you know it's so super important to me that we support your business because um, you know you you donated to this initiative that we were part of um, and to me you know we're all a part of this community so as a business if we can give back and, and not just you know in monetary ways but our time and volunteering and supporting people because at some point many of us may, may need the same support so if we can give now um, I think that's what I think that's what makes us successful so when we win awards for community work and, and charity and we spend the time doing it it's so much more rewarding than um, really than the stuff we do in business, that's just part of it. Thank you, Christy. These were nice different perspectives to know. We have uh, MPP Kanjin talking about being a mom, where we don't get any degree and you have to be on the boardroom. Yeah. <laughs> And Christy, who, Christy, Dr. Cousins, who talked about how empowering our community girls, our community women, is what success means to her. And Christy, who's been into charity work and giving back to the community. Thank you. I will move on to Deputy Chief Sutton. You were appointed to the position of Deputy Chief in April 23, following your initial role as a constable in the police force. Progressing through the ranks to sergeant, staff sergeant and inspector, you eventually attained the position of deputy chief. Throughout your 35-year career in law enforcement, 
Did you ever encounter any challenges stemming from societal expectations for success for women? And if so, how did you navigate and address these challenges? Um, thank you for the question. Um, again, as I have 35 years in career, I started my policing career in the 80s uh, down there with Toronto Police and um, women were sort of new to the field of policing at that time. They probably less than a dozen years police, uh, women had been in policing. So I was fortunate in my career that, you know, there's always those struggles and hurdles, but I was fortunate in my career that I did have support of a lot of good leaders that um, believed in me and believed in what I was doing. So, um, I was fortunate in that for my career, and I hope that um, as I have progressed through the ranks, and I am blessed and very fortunate to be in the position that I'm at, that I am able to um, provide that guidance and leadership to others that may be struggling in um, not just this um, profession, but in other professions, and to show everybody that, you know what, if you, if you work really hard, and it, it's not been easy for me, I have to work hard for everything that I get, that you can be successful, and you just have to believe in yourself, and you have to surround yourself with people that believe in you and encourage you. Mayor Dolan, you have been actively involved in the town's political arena since your election as a councillor in 1994. Subsequently serving as deputy mayor in 2014, mayor in 2018 and 22, AMO President from 2016 to 2018 and Deputy Warden for the County of Simcoe from 2020 to 22. In your extensive tenure, have you observed a shift in the societal perceptions regarding the benchmark for success of women in politics since 94? Oddly, um, no. Um, when my my first term of council, there were five women and four men on my council. Now that wasn't normal in Ontario, um, and now I'm, I'm currently blessed to have a lot of strong females on council as well. Um, so I would say that um, over the years it has changed as far as um, as far as the duties that you're responsible for. And um, I was fortunate enough to have a very, very strong mentor who believed in me as well. And I'm gonna get choked up because when her picture came up there, Hazel McCallion was a huge um, mentor for me and um, never she was never more than a phone call away whenever I saw any difficulties. Um, but what I have noticed a real shift in is there's the same number of women in politics, but back in the, in the 90s, they would put other women down or not to support each other. And what I've really noticed lately is women supporting other women and helping each other out. I recently had a mayor from Moonbeam, Ontario, which is a, in very northern Ontario, reach out to me for some advice and mentorship, and I'm happy to do that. Um, we have a mentorship program through AMO where we have youth fellows who many of them are women and I've, I've been blessed to be able to support two young women um, just out of university and in their municipal careers. So um, I would say that's the change, not as much as um, it's women pushing up other women instead of holding down other women. That was good. Nishika, you have served almost 37 years as an officer in the Canadian Armed Forces. You were promoted to Colonel in 2014 and Deputy Commandment of the Canadian Forces College in 2015. You have served on the board of directors of multiple committees. How have societal perception of success for women in the armed forces evolved over the past 37 years? And what personal challenges did you face while you were redefining success in your terms? Mayor and I struggled with this question. <laughs> um, I joined the Canadian Forces in 1982, and at that time, women were not able to serve in all parts of the Canadian Forces. And I remember during my training, um, so early on, uh, this 
senior major was in charge of us and he, he was ranting up and down and he says, you will never make it in this Canadian forces if you don't serve in an army unit. And I guess that's the message he had given to people. <laughs> but he hadn't, I don't think he noticed that there were four or five of us women in the class and we could not serve with the army back then. And I remember calling my mother and you spoke about your parents and she reminded me of this. I called my mother and I said, I don't know why I'm in this career because I'm never going to make it past the rank of captain because women can't serve in the army. And she said, you stay calm and carry on. She kind of kicked my butt and, and told me to just do my best and leave the rest. That was her words of wisdom to me that, that I sort of took. And sure enough, down the road, um, all trades were open to women. And I did, you know, clearly make it past the rank of captain after 37 years. And so, I mean, I credit my mother for that. So how, you know, the military is an amazing organization. And it's come a huge way uh, since I joined in 1982, and particularly, I would say, for women. Um, and I, you know, I've left the military four years ago. And it's hard to believe it's been that long already. Um, and I see women advancing now to the very highest ranks in the Canadian Forces. And I don't think anybody today says, you, if you don't do this, you're never going to make it to there. So um, I've seen that and I've benefited from the changes that have happened over the years systemically. Um, for me, I don't know how to... I don't know how to categorize my success, apart from that young man sitting right there, who is my 18-year-old son, and like you, being a mother, the most important thing. Thank you, Nishika. The one thing which we hear from all the three ladies is mentorship and camaraderie between the between different women, whether it's work, whether it's your family, whether it's your mom, like Nishika said. And that's what is the one of the major driving factors. Our family, our, the women we know at workplace, the women we know at, in our house. Thank you. Now talking about success, they say that success is sweeter when it comes up to multiple failures. And we cannot really talk about success without knowing what failures are. So on this note, I would like to ask Dr. Cousins, you have received numerous accolades for your achievements. However, have you ever faced a su substantial setback that led you to a very low point? And what was your key factor that helped you navigate throughout the challenging period? I felt I've experienced a lot of setbacks, absolutely. One of the major setbacks, I would say, was getting divorced. Huge, major, big. My mom wouldn't talk to me for a long time. She's very, very religious. <laughs> so, you know, she is one that would be a societal definition of you need to stay married regardless of what's happening. The house could be burning down, you will stay in that house. Right, so that's, that's, that was a major setback for me. And having to raise my two children as a parent by myself, and the perception of you know the single parent stigma that is following you around regardless of who you are and where you're going. And of course, being a black woman, well, heaven forbid, that's even worse. The stigma sticks to you like you can't even get rid of it. So that was one of the darkest spots, I would say, that I, I went into where I was thinking, you know, do I continue to follow the path of society that says as a single parent, which I don't consider myself, I'm a parent who is parenting singly. That's how I see myself. I'm not a single parent um, because the way that I coped and the way that I manage and I continue to do that is through the people that I wrap around me, it's through my, what I call my tribe and you know, regardless of whether you have a husband or a significant other or a partner, it doesn't matter. You can't raise your children on your own. Believe me, you can't. You know, and by surrounding myself with people, I was able to come back from that place where 
I was able to, um, you know, refocus and think about what I want to do, how I'm going to do it, and pull myself up and say, this is only a setback. It's not going to stop me. I'm still going to achieve all the things I want to achieve. It's going to be harder, absolutely. However, with the help of parents, let me tell you, worth the weight in gold, you know, good friends, your community, your church, all of the pieces that helps you, they're the ones that help to pull you up and help to hold you together when you're by yourself and need support. So that that is how I made, you know, the dark time a place where I could see really um, such brightness and able to raise to highly functioning, contributing members of our society now. So, absolutely. Thank you. I just want to say to the panel, um, the importance of your panel discussion today, because for young women or women of my age, that are reaching my age, um, we, we all come from different backgrounds, different experiences, challenges, and setbacks. And sometimes uh, we don't have that support in the family. But the support comes from community, from hearing women like yourself, because young women and others uh, in the audience and community today, they look at you and they think, these are successful women. If they can share that they've had challenges and setbacks and they've gotten through it, then I can do it as well. And um, I've personally gone through many setbacks in my personal life, and I chose, I can do, I can let it swallow me up, or I can choose to move forward and get through this, and use this experience in my life to make a difference for others. I'm just sitting here and filtering through everything I've heard and thinking what am I going to bring with me home today to pass on to my two daughters and a son and it's incredible that we need more a community events like this because it brings everyone together and I just wanted to say that it's phenomenal uh, to hear to the stories, to hear to the wisdom, to hear to the, to listen to the advice and um, I think that uh, Based on my personal experience, uh, life in Ontario has changed so much <laughs> in the past 31 years for the best, for the very best. And having women support each other in so many ways and uh, fixing other queens' crowns, that's what counts. Hi, everybody. Um, I just want to say as well, like this event means so much to me. Um, especially someone who's aspiring to enter in the politic, the political um, sphere. And um, I'm just inspired by everybody who just keeps pushing because um, as Andrea knows, politics is not for the weak. And um, it, just, it just goes to show that the, there's so many amazing mentors and women in this community. It doesn't have to be catty and it doesn't have to um, be exclusive, that we can all be um, accepting and kind towards each other and also push towards our goals and um, I've met so many people during the break who have been amazing and um, it really does mean a lot to me especially because I look look up to a lot of people on the panel um, like like Mayor Lynn Dolan and Dr. Claudine Cousins and obviously Andrea um, I'm gonna name drop Andrea all the time just in case you know who I work for um, that was a joke um, <laughs> okay. yes vote for her for the next election please <laughs> But uh, it just it just means a lot because I it's been a lot in my um, personal life and I was thinking about leaving politics but just this event kind of I guess reinforced uh, I guess my purpose to stay so thank you. I know it's weird probably not taking the mic right now but I do want to share the lesson that I have learned. In the past year, and it's just the importance of waking up every day and being positive, no matter what life throws at you. Sometimes 
I get up, go to work, sometimes I go to all my school, and I just see Christy like battling every single week that gets thrown at her, and I've never seen her enough put a smile on her face for everyone she comes across with during her day. So that's one key takeaway that I've got from Christy or Professor here, and I've never underestimated. Never underestimate the power of positivity in everything you do. So thank you, Chris. Anybody else? Awesome. This is great. Well, good afternoon. Thank you so much for uh, those very inspiring messages from all the panels. Um, I was a little bit late coming in, I have to work, um, but you know, hearing um, the last hour of the discussions by everybody and all the um, wonderful encouragement and the messages coming from all of you really um, sort of validates and solidifies that, uh, like you've mentioned, really for you to keep going, you really have to be resilient. So I came to Canada way back in 2001 as an international student. Um, and I'm the only one in here, I don't have any relatives, I only have a couple of friends that I came with to study, and um, it, it's, it's, it ha I have my fair share of all those challenges and hardships that I had to go through, but looking back from, you know, 2001 and 20 some years later, um, I really, you know, I couldn't have imagined uh, myself being in this position, but I think from the start, I find that, you know, not just me personally being resilient uh, from the beginning, but also because I also have a very selected couple of um, friends that were there um, that sort of I, I, I go with them the same level of challenges that we went through when we were starting. So I think it really makes a huge difference to have selected number. And then, like I said, you know, you, you have to really select the people that you sort of associate with and uh, make sure that those people are really the ones that um, is going to help you get through um, the challenges that you're going to go through, but at the same time be there for each other as well. Thank you. Today's discussion was all about flipping the success script. Our panelists today delved into the realms of success, advocating moving away from conventional approaches and have endorsed personalized success stories that prioritize their values and emphasize their own personal touch. We zoomed in on well-being purpose and making waves in the society as the heart and soul of success. We shed light on how our success stories are getting makeover across all areas, nudging everyone to rethink what success truly means to you, and on how we can add more sparkle and more purpose to our everyday lives. Thank you. Let's hear it for these fierce heroes. ये थी अब तक की खबरें देखते रहिए सिमको कम्युनिटी मीडिया धन्यवाद